That's the way things have always been done. I can't tell you how many times I've seen this phrase vilified in movies and cartoons, but more and more I find myself hesitant to immediately put any kind of stigma against it. That's the way things have always been done. To me, seems like a terrible reason to do anything if that's the only reason, but oftentimes it's not. I can't tell you how long this soup has existed in my culture. Maybe it's only as old as my great-great-grandmother, maybe it's older than Jesus. If you think about it, both aren't all that old compared to how long the Chinese have been cooking. We done been there, and we done been making soup. Who knows when we started using this tiny little fritillary bulb, and I don't know who decided that paired with a white jelly mushroom, pears, and other spices and jujubes, which tastes like a date, but less sweet and slightly more tart, would be a good remedy for a cough. But they've been doing it, and after a while, people stopped asking questions. We just know this soup is sweet and is good for cough. Eventually, it became a thing that's always been done. Because there's no meat in this soup, making it is rather easy. Wash the mushrooms, peel the pears, compile your spices into a cheesecloth or a tea strainer, and toss everything in along with the dry fruits and bring to a boil. Once boiling, reduce to a gentle simmer so the bubbles don't shred up the pears. Once the water is golden, you can remove the spices and let everything sit and store as is. If having it for breakfast, I don't see why you can't mix it in with your oatmeal. But just a bowl of this on its own is a great light start to a cool morning. Originally, I learned this soup to make a cooling tonic. One with the assistance of herbs and the soluble fiber that comes from the barley and mushrooms would help hydrate the body and reduce temperature. Soluble fiber is good for that because it helps retain water in the bowels, helping digestion, but also helping water stick around where it would have been quickly expelled. It was great for when I didn't have air conditioning. Just a little tweak of the spices, switching galangal for ginger and cardamom for cinnamon, it proved to be really good at helping keep the body warm too. But I wonder about the fritillary bulb and look to see if there was anything behind that. The US National Library of Medicine showed me some resources that pointed out that there were indeed compounds in the bulb that have been shown to do things that we've been using it for, including a study that found it particularly effective for cough. It was in mice. I'd very much like to hear what a mouse cough sounds like now. That's the way things have always been done to me is still a terrible reason to do anything if it's presented to me as the only reason. But at least now my instinct is look to see if I could find out why instead of just not do it.